Good evening, brothers and sisters, and welcome to our midweek Bible study. I pray that you're staying safe. I want to encourage you to continue to utilize social distancing and use common sense in protecting yourself. I want to go to God in prayer tonight, and then we're going to go to our study. Almighty and all wise God, we thank you for the blessings of this day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you that your mercies are new every morning. We pray now for your continued blessings. Pray for your continued guidance. Ask that you would protect us and keep us from all harm. I pray for our church. I pray, dear God, for our community and our country. We're relying on your word that if your people who are called by your name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek your face, that you will hear their prayers and you will heal the land. We love you. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, tonight, brothers and sisters, I want to talk about always pray. Always pray. I believe that part of what this crisis is doing is getting us to a place in our lives where we practice prayer on an ongoing basis. Two passages of scripture that came to mind as I thought about it. The first is found in the book of Ephesians chapter six, verse 18. And Paul says, praying always with all prayer and supplications in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Ephesians 6, 18. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Paul says, pray without ceasing. And many of us are reminded of the words of Jesus in the gospel of St. Luke chapter 18, verse one, where he speaks a parable to his disciples and said that men are, are to always pray and not faint. As a matter of fact, Jesus himself demonstrates for us that prayer is an important part of our life. As a matter of fact, I believe that prayer is one of the most powerful weapons that a believer have yet it is used less than anything in our lives. Jesus sets an example. And in the book of Luke, Luke focuses on the prayer life of Jesus more than any of the other gospel writers. Luke records that Jesus prayed after his baptism in Luke 3.21. Jesus prayed after healing a leper in Luke 5.16. He prayed all night before choosing the disciples, Luke 12, or Luke 6, 12 through 16. There was a time when Jesus was alone, yet he prayed, Luke 9, 18 through 22. Before he was transfigured, Jesus prayed, Luke 9, 28. On the cross, he prays for his crucifiers in Luke 23, 24. And as he is dying and he commends his spirit to the Father, we find Jesus praying in Luke 23, 46. David Jeremiah says in his book, Overcomer, that we need to look for triggers that prompts us to pray, reminders that trigger us to pray. We ought to pray on all occasions, whether we're driving down the street, standing in the line at a store, or even doing our chores, pray on all occasions. The Bible says that we are to pray when we are thankful, 2 Corinthians 1.11. When we need to confess our sins, we should pray, James 5.16. James 5.14 tells us that when we are sick, we are to pray and call for others to pray for us. And certainly we are to pray when we are tempted, Matthew 
26, 41. So we are to pray on all occasions. We also should pray in all places. When Jesus was alone, I'd already noted, and again, Mark notes in Mark 1, 35, that Jesus was in a solitary place, yet he prayed. On the mountain, Matthew 14, 23, Jesus prayed. We find Peter in Acts chapter 10, verse nine, praying on a housetop. We find Lydia and other believers praying at the riverside in Acts 16, 13. And last week we shared that we as believers are to pray by entering into our secret closet and God who sees in secret will reward us openly. Pray on all occasions, pray in all places, pray at all times. We find Jesus in Mark 135 again, praying before daylight. We find believers in Acts 16 praying on the Sabbath. We find Jesus praying all night in Luke 6, 12. So in, at all times and in all places, we ought to pray. Paul says, pray without ceasing. Make prayer our lifestyle. And brothers and sisters, we ought to pray for all things. Matthew 24, 20 encourages us to pray for safety. Mark eleven twenty five to pray for forgiveness. In Luke eleven three, 3, there's a prayer for food. In 3 John, verse 2, a prayer for health and prosperity. We're living in praying times, personal prayer and corporate prayer. And although we're not meeting, in the building, I want to ask us as a church family to begin this coming Thursday and at 7 p.m. for the next seven days, this Thursday through next Wednesday at 7 p.m., stop whatever you're doing and go to God in prayer. We're taught in the book of James that the prayer of the righteous will produce results. Brothers and sisters, it's praying time. Let us pray and let us always pray. Seven days at 7 p.m. beginning Thursday. May God bless you and may God keep you is my prayer.